I was never told the truth. I was told that it was another man's child that she had DNA tested the father. I came in when he was born and Miss Hugh had told me that it, it was not my child, that she had DNA tested the father, that it had nothing to do with me. Never heard anything back. I don't know. I believed her. This originated as a complaint to establish parentage filed by the district attorney's child support office, if I understand correctly. Yes. And paternity having been established, this is a motion to set visitation. Um, you are Susan, ha uh, Amy Susan Hewitt. Ms. Hewitt, yes. you know, do you understand why we're here today? Um, yes, and I would like to get a GAL or as an advocate and request that before making any determination, the court review his criminal record, request, uh, request the record of any child protective investigation, and that he's been involved with and require he take a drug screen. Well, first and foremost, let me tell you that there is a motion that has been filed to set visitation, and that motion was set for hearing today. Um, you have not yet filed any sort of response to that motion as far as this record reflects. Have you filed anything in writing? Um, I don't have an attorney. Yes, ma'am, I understand that. The child support DA is not going to represent you on this matter because that's not their job. They only handle the child support action. But you have the right to hire an attorney of your own choosing if you choose to do so. The question is whether or not you are planning to do that. I told to ask for one. A guardian ad litem. Oh, sorry. Guardian ad litems are not automatically awarded because of the simple fact that uh, if I appoint a guardian ad litem, there has to be, number one, a valid basis for the appointment of a guardian ad litem. Number two, it has to do with who is going to pay for the guardian ad litem's fees. They don't do it for free. Usually there's a, uh, an attorney that's appointed, and that attorney expects to be uh, paid according to that. And in a civil case, most of the time, the guardian ad litem is paid by either one or both of the parties. So it would be uh, an expense to you and to... Uh, Mr. Fenton, um, so paternity was just established in May of this year. According to the file, it says that on May 20th of 2024, the court held that the father was a was the biological party uh, father of the of the minor child. Well, I cannot simply because you asked me to uh, appoint you a uh, appoint a guardian ad litem. Now, as far as the CASA. You have every right if that's what you choose to do, but that is not something that the court normally orders as well. Um, do you have opposition to Mr. Fenton having visitation with a minor child? I let him come around once or twice a couple of times over. He would not say anything. Well, here's what we're going to do. We're going to conduct a hearing of sorts, and I'm going to hear from him about what he's asking me to do, and because he set this motion, and then I'll hear from you about what your reasons are, what you're stating is really testimony, and I need that to be under oath. So we'll have this hearing, and then when I've had the hearing, I'll make a decision on what, if any, visitation or what, whether to appoint a guardian ad litem at that point, okay? Just have a seat at that table, please. All right, Mr. Murphy, you, you wish to put on proof? Yes, Your Honor, we would call our client, Matthew Fenton. To Mr. Stand. Fenton, step around, please, and have a seat in the witness stand. So. Could you please state and spell your full name for the record? Matthew Christopher Fenton, M-A-T-T-H-E-W-F-E-N-T-O-N. And Mr. Fenton, are you the uh, co-parent, are you a co-parent of Amy Susan Hewitt? Uh, yes, sir. Both of you have a child together? Yes, sir. How old is the child? Um, he turned three February 28th. And you're here today because you would like to begin visitation with the child, is that correct? Yes, sir. Okay. Have you well, made any... You're going to have to speak into that microphone <coughs> a little bit more. Yes, sir. Have you made any efforts thus far to get visitation? Uh, yes. Uh, she allowed me to come on three visits. Um, my Who mom, is she? Uh, Ms. Hewitt allowed me to come three different times uh, after March 25th uh, when I was, you know, I'd taken a DNA test. And I went to her house um, after 12 noon, and um, I stayed until seven two times and then the third time i stayed until 9 p.m my mom that's just turned 82 years old that was she went twice that's the only two times she's ever seen him and um, we just would like rights uh, you know i was never told the truth i was told that it was uh, another man's child that she had dna tested the father i came in when he was born 
or when his expected date was um, February 24th, 2021, I was working in Virginia. And I drove in from out of state eight hours away. And Miss Hewitt told me that it, it was not my child, that she had DNA tested the father, that it had nothing to do with me. I never, never heard anything back, you know, and, uh, and, um, and I don't know, I believed her. I've never had a child before. This is my only child. And uh, I'd just like to, you know, be involved in his life and, and get to visit him. And, Has Miss Hewitt refused you visitation at any point? Uh, yes, sir. Tell us about that. Um, you know, I, I went three times for we had the, the court hearing, um, and it said um, on the documents that you have there, Mr. Mm -hmm. Wolf signed off that I should receive reasonable visitation. And I highlighted it and sent a copy to Miss Hewitt and ask her for visitation. I even uh, really wanted to get him for Father's Day, you know, because I'd already missed a few. And I drove down and went to the district attorney's office that day and, and spoke with the child support uh, lady as well. And, you know, uh, she told me to contact my attorney and then I came on to the courthouse. Um, but yeah, she, she will not allow me to see him and, and told me not to come back to her house and that pretty much happened when I filed for visitation rights. Did you advise her that that was part of the court order? Uh, yes, sir. Looks like alternate residential parent, a non non custodial parent should have reasonable visitation privileges. Did you tell her about that? Uh, yes, sir. What was her response? She did, doesn't care. And you did give her a copy of that? Yes, sir. Okay. You just heard her make some claims just now when she appeared up here at the podium about criminal charges, uh, and all sorts of other things. Do you have any kind of response to that? Uh, yeah, I don't have a criminal record. I've worked uh, on federal projects for the last 23 years since I was 18. I'm currently doing a Send Elements battery recycling facility, which is government backed and is a federal project. I take random drug tests and more than happy to take one right now today in court. And um, I don't, I don't have a, I don't even have a bad driving record. Nothing's on that as well. So. Where do you live at? I live uh, in Scottsville, Kentucky for the last 16 years, be 17 years uh, in April of next year. Okay, so just from a, um, so we uh, have just understand how this would work. How would you propose, you know, visitation work if you being out of Kentucky and her being here in Tennessee? Um, I'm, I'm more than happy to, to make the drive to come pick my son up and drop him back off. Just whatever it takes to see my son. You just want to start seeing your son again? Yes, sir. Okay. Let me ask you this. Have you taken a parenting class recently? Uh, yes, sir. I've had, I have a completion, but um, it's on my phone. I don't have it printed off. But I, you don't have a physical copy, but you did complete it? Yes, sir. This and morning? I, I emailed it to you as well. Um, okay. So we, we, we can get that, you know. So you'd be happy to late file it if we have to? Yes, sir. Okay. All right. Um, those were all my questions. Thank you very much, Mr. Fenton. Hewitt, you are representing yourself at this hearing. You have the right to ask questions of this witness. I'm going to give you a chance to testify if you want to testify. But do you have questions that you want to ask of this witness? You're not required to ask questions. I'm just giving you the opportunity. If you want to ask questions, they must be in question form, and it must relate to some issue that's before the court. Do you want to ask him any questions about what he's testified to? The, um, I gave you time with Ashton supervised at my house, right? Um, I took him every time that I, I was there and your daughter. And supervised you and with your mom? No, I mean, the first time wasn't. My mom wasn't with me. You just testified your mom came with you. The Twice. Two, yeah. The one and time, she, the first time I came, I came alone, and I took him to the auto parts store to get parts to fix your car because it was broken down. And I came back on my first visit and fixed it so you had transportation. And then also um, gave her money for to get insurance <laughs> and to get her tax for her vehicle so they would have a reliable vehicle and transportation. I never denied you that I seeing him at my house supervised, right? Um, yeah. I denied you? The messages I have say uh, not to come back. I've got back. all of them printed out along from your ex-wife too okay well, i mean I, I just i don't where you you, you shouldn't have i don't see you. the reason is he's autistic nonverbal. you've known about him since day one number one you're testifying now i'm going to give you a chance Sorry. to testify but you uh, are not required i mean you you cannot 
make statements and okay. testify at this point. Well, I just, CPS has been involved with him in the past and his ex-wife. And again, you're testifying, and I'm not going to allow sorry. you to do okay. that until you take the stand, okay? Okay. All right, thank you. So, oh, let me ask you a couple of questions. Yes, sir. Um, you're asking for visitation at this point, but in the petition that you filed, you asked to be made the primary residential parent for this child. You aware of that? Sir. In other words, you want to be the person who has full custody of the child and she has visitation. Yes, sir. Even though you've not had but three visits with this child since he's been born? Well, I mean, I would, I'd like to make up for lost time and at least have, you know, split visitation with him where, I mean, he, he's taken to me very well. I mean, he's... No, she's made statements several times about this child having some, some special needs. Are you aware of any special needs that your son has? Uh, yeah, he's nonverbal. He doesn't speak, but I, I'm able to teach him stuff pretty easy. And, and he's uh, three years old? Yes, yes okay. sir. Anything further, Mr. Murphy? Thank you, sir. Step down. Mr. Murphy, you may call your next witness. All right. Ms. Hewitt, do you want to tell me why you don't want to let him have visitation? Then come up, raise your right hand, let's place you under oath. Um, he has a bad history, and I've, I've got proof um, from his sister his ex-wife, he... Well, number one, let me explain to you. This, this, this is a court of law. That means you can't just get up and say you've talked to somebody and they've told you things. You have to have those people come in as witnesses and testify themselves of their own direct knowledge. Otherwise, what they say would be considered to be hearsay. In other words, we, we could have witnesses come in all day long and say, well, Joe Blow out here told me that uh, the father is a terrible human being and he does this or does that. So it's not sufficient for you to bring in statements of other people who supposedly have knowledge. You would have to have some sort of testimony from them in person so that Mr. Murphy, representing your, your child's father, would have the opportunity to then cross-examine them to determine whether or not they're being truthful or not truthful. That's the way the system okay. works. So. You get in the seal, the um, their sealed court documents, but if I, his ex told me she would resend them to me. Again, Mr. Murphy's objecting to you t saying what so his ex was. So I her. When I'm talking to you, just be quiet, okay? Sorry. When Mr. Murphy is objecting to you saying what the ex wife said, which is the very reason that I was explained to you that it's considered to be hearsay, a statement by someone made outside of the court that you're bringing in to prove the truth of what's in that statement. That's classic hearsay and it's not admitted. So tell me, other than what someone told you, what knowledge do you have? First of all, what kind of relationship did you and Mr. Fenton have before you became pregnant? Um, I was best friends with his sister and we grew up together. Okay. I love his mom, love his sister. They had warned me prior, um, but how long did you and Mr. Fenton have a relationship? Um, for it was three months until and he started acting erratic. When you say, if you saw something that he was doing erratically, tell me what you saw that you think was erratic. Um, driving crazy, screaming, scaring me and my daughter, fussing, throwing things. And why were those things happening? We honest, I, I don't know. Were you and he having an argument? Not at all. Was he under the influence of some some substance? Do you have any knowledge of that or are you just assuming that? I have knowledge from being around past family members with the same issues and talking to his sister and mother and them informing me. You know. Again, Mr. Murphy is objecting, so I, I'm sustaining his objection. I won't allow you to testify about what they said. So. You become pregnant, did that end your relationship or did you stay together after you became pregnant? Um, well, I've got my messages in his, but he, he didn't want us to, he just dropped off the earth because I wouldn't uproot my children and go live in a travel trailer while he worked out of state. So when did you and he stop having a relationship? I was four months pregnant. All right. From four months pregnant until uh, March of this year, did he ever see or have any contact with this child? Um, no. Okay. Did you ever refuse him to have contact no. with the child? Again, just wait oh, till sorry. I'm finished. Did you ever have refused to let him have contact with your son before that March 
date that he's referred to? No, sir. Did he ever contact you before he was served with a petition to establish paternity and to set child support? Did he ever contact you and ask for visitation? No, sir. All right. So the first time he asked for visitation was after you and he had been to court over the child support? Yeah, he's right. about. And then you allowed him to have supervised visitation, coming to your house, being with your child, correct? Yes, and his mother. Right. And his mother came along too? Yes. Uh, is there any reason why you would not allow him to have that type of visitation right now? I never said that he, I told him he could come to my house supervised. Tell I mean, me about your son. What issues do you, does your son have? He's um, got a rare heart condition, Epstein's anomaly, pulmonary hypertension. Um, and then he's nonverbal, autistic. Um, he gets therapy through the week and PK-3. Where does he get therapy? Um, at uh, pre-K with special services. He, st he started at TEIS, Tennessee Early Intervention, okay. from birth. And then we... Um, moved over to with the board of education when he turned three and he goes to school during the week and he gets ot pt speech aba and where does he go to school oakmont, oakmont. now <clears throat> what i'm understanding you to say is is that you have concerns on what people have told you about mr fenton and his his past but that you would be willing to let him have visitation at your home I would be willing to let him, uh, if I was there, just not well, him, yes, about. sir. But you don't want him taking the child away at this point? No, sir. All right. Anything else you want to tell me about, the, other than what somebody may have told you, is there anything else you want to tell me about your son? Or it's Mr. my Fenton? world. You understand that when he was held to be the father by the, when he was held to be the father by the uh, child support magistrate, then that means he has certain rights under the law, that he has a right as a father to see this child, his son. The only question, you don't get to have it both ways. You don't get to have, for example, the uh, child support paid but no visitation, absent a finding that he poses an, an immediate and serious harm, a uh, threat of harm to your son. In other words, if you establish paternity those rights go with the child support obligation. He has a right to see the child. So the question is, you under, do you understand he has a right as a father to visit with his son? Yes, and I never denied him seeing him. Okay. And I've, I've raised a 22-year-old with autism who's um, in college, successful, works at Walgreens as a pharmacy tech. I've got a 12-year-old with autism also. Like, I've done this a long time, and... I've known him a long time, and I just, he wouldn't be safe. Mr. Murphy, you have any questions? Well, let me ask you some questions. First off, I think you made it pretty clear. You said you're not opposed to him having visitation with the child. Is that correct? Um, I never was as long as it was supervised. I was there. Okay, what exactly are your concerns as far as him being able to have the child at his house? Number one, he's never raised a child or been in his life for three years he doesn't know him I mean just because he puts his hands up to him he does it to any man because he's not around men so how much time would you say would be needed to get to know the child before you'd be comfortable with that stage with him what stage with him actually having a child at his house I don't know you don't know I mean he's autistic and nonverbal and I mean he's a complete stranger have you given Mr. Fenton the opportunity to assist with the child's autistic and nonverbal needs? Uh, I was more than willing. The only reason I objected to anything was when he told me to have him ready Friday night and then he would drop him back off on Monday. That's when I cut it off. What do you mean that's when you cut it off? That's when I cut off. I was like, you're not taking my child out of state that can't even tell me when something's wrong, you've never raised a child. You have no idea what this is like, much less with autism and his heart condition. He's never been a night away from me. Okay. But I think, is there a point to where you have to understand he has parenting rights to this child just like you do, right? Yes. So is there a point to where you'd be willing to agree, okay, yeah, you can take him 
take him overnight. I mean, I, it, we would have to see if it would, I don't know. I don't know. Okay. Judge, let me see if my client has any questions other than that. All right, thank you, ma'am. You may step down and have a seat at the uh, table. Mr. Murphy, do you say you have something else? Yes, yes, sir. All right, call your witness. Step right up here, please, ma'am. Could you please state and spell your full name for the record? Um, Elena Page Reamers, A-L-A-I-N-A-R-E-M-E-R-S. Ms. Reamers, do you know Mr. Fenton? I do. How do you know him? Um, he's my mom's boyfriend. Has he raised you at any point? Yes. Can you tell us a bit about that? Um, he's raised me since I was 12 and provided me with everything that I've needed. Do you and him have a father-daughter relationship? I would say so, yes. What would you say about that experience as him acting like your father? He's done more than what my actual father could have. You've never seen him have any kind of drug problems or no. any criminal activities? No. Okay. All right. You think, based on what you've seen, he'd have any problem raising a three-year-old child? No. Okay. Those would be all my questions, Your Honor. Do you have any questions for this witness? You uh, have a seat, please. You testified about that, but to your knowledge, has Mr. Fenton ever dealt with an autistic child that's three years of age that's nonverbal? No. Thank you. You can step down. Any other witnesses, Mr. Murphy? Do you have any other witnesses you wish to call? This is a temporary hearing on a motion to establish some sort of visitation. The order that established, uh, established Mr. Fenton's paternity of this child was entered by the child support magistrate on May 20th of 2024. And at that time, the order that was entered was uh, entered based on the failure of the plaintiff to appear, which was Mrs. Hewitt. And nonetheless, it was entered that there would be a child, there would be an uh, establishment of paternity, and that he was found to be the, the father, that the primary residential parent would be the mother, and that the defendant as the alternate residential parent would have reasonable visitation privileges. So. It has been established, and what is reasonable to one person is not always reasonable to the other, and that's one of the problems with reasonable visitation. The court finds that it is based upon the distance between these parties that it is reasonable for Mr. Fenton to have visitation at Mrs. Hewitt's or Miss Hewitt's home for a period of uh, noon until nine o'clock on every Saturday. Well, we'll make it one Saturday, and then alternate week will be Sunday, and that will continue for a period of 90 days. Following that, he will have a visitation consisting of all day, and it will no longer be supervised. In other words, I'm going to graduate, graduate that to, it'll go from 8 o'clock in the morning until 8 o'clock that, or 6 o'clock that night. It'll be day long, and he'll be allowed at that point to remove the child after 90 days of every week having the child uh, visiting with the child will assume that there is a problem, that there is no problem and he'd be able to have the child and go that. That's all I'm going to do on a temporary basis. That will be continuing um, and he'll have that child one week on Saturday, one week on Sunday, and but he'll see it weekly because I'm trying to establish a bond between him and the child. This is a difficult situation because of the child's special needs. If you want to ch uh, consult the uh, CASA people to see whether or not they can assist you in that regard, but there's no evidence before me to indicate that um, there is any problem with Mr. Fenton as a father, and you can expect that barring something, this will gradually increase to become a lot more like a normal visitation situation, but a lot of that depends on whether or not Mr. Fenton is able to, to handle uh, dealing with this young man, and whether or not the child adjusts to being away from you, and the special needs that he has are a question for the court. So I'm going to order this as a temporary basis and then subject to review. If the parties can't work out an agreement, Mr. Murphy, you can revisit this uh, motion. And no, Ms. Thank you. And Ms. Hewitt, if you consult with the CASA people and they are able to give you some assistance, then, you know, we can re This is a temporary order, which means it doesn't, you know, if, if the child has an adverse reaction, and again, I'm going to, encourage you in order as a part of this so that both parties will work to encourage the visitation being as smooth and beneficial to the child and not create an environment where the child is hesitant to go with his father. So it's 
part of it's going to be your job is to try to make him comfortable with going to see his father. But <clears throat> if there is an issue, then it can always come back before the court near one of the other judges. All right, thank you.